So here is a Colorado potato beetle larvae munching away on some of my potato plants. Uh, there's sprays you can spray, but our policy isn't to spray here on Oxbow Farm. So we try and do just cultural controls. Uh, supposedly the best thing you can do is to alternate timing of when you plant your potatoes year on year. So if you plant your potatoes early in 2016, then you plant them very, very late in 2017. And this basically acts to starve the alternate generations of uh, potato beetle. So when you plant early, you're starving the late generation. And when you plant late, you're starving the overwintered beetles. And so then you basically prevent them from effectively reproducing by not having uh, adequate food supply. But that all goes out the window if you have other alternate food supplies like buffalo burr, because then they'll just eat that and wait for the potatoes, so. So here on this plant, we've got both kinds of potato beetle larvae. This is their standard Colorado potato beetle larvae. And then this guy, here, if you can see it, on the underside, that kind of glob on its back is a lesser or false potato beetle. And they look very similar, except they're usually almost always on the underside of the leaf like that. And they always have, they're sort of like a greenish yellow color, and they always have that big glob of feces that they throw up onto their back as kind of a predator, you know, uh, they smear themselves with their own feces to, avoid, you know, prevent predators from attacking them, uh, which is gross. But they look very similar in coloring to, uh, the adults look very similar in coloring to the Colorado potato beetle, but they're shaped more like a cucumber beetle, sort of a skinny, narrow beetle. I haven't seen any this year. Um, I've seen a lot of the adult Colorado potato beetles, although I can't find any right at this moment. This is kind of what I do for a little bit of potato control. And you know, this is about as big of a patch as this is gonna work at. But this is just a jug of yogurt container of soapy water. You can just, you know, kind of brush the larvae off into the water. And they pretty darn near instantly die. So here's the, here's kind of an up close on the other type of potato beetle larva and you can see all of the feces that it's it smeared on its back. Super appetizing for everyone. Goodbye. This is a little unusual to have like individual ones because a lot of times you'll see them kind of in packs on the leaves. They're, they're more social. I would say, than the Colorado potato beetles. Kind of have this area here with a lot of potato beetles. This plant, this is one of the Amy Azul plants. It seems to be rather highly attractive because here's the, another plant right next to it with very little damage and they're within, you know, eight inches of each other. So. There's some nice little sarpo berries coming on. So who that guy is, is the two-spotted stink bug. And they're kind of a specialized potato beetle predator. A little bit shy. Um, there's another one right in here that's actually eating a potato beetle. Where'd you go? Eh. 
and they are actually specialist predators of Colorado potato beetle. That's all they eat. Um, unfortunately, they're kind of like potato beetle samurai, you know. They have classy outfits and um, ruthless, deadly killing skills, but they don't have like really large numbers and it takes them a really long time to build up. And so they don't, they're not like potato beetle terminators and they're not actually a solution for controlling Colorado potato beetle in a planting all by themselves, unfortunately, because they just are never enough of them. But they're really cool. There's one with his mouth parts stabbing a potato bug and he's like, don't watch me while I eat. Hee hee hee. So you can see they do like to ruthlessly kill Colorado potato beetle larvae, but they can't keep up with them, unfortunately. So, here's a little bonus footage of some buzz pollination. Uh, be earlier in the season, the little tiny sweat bees, helicted bees, were doing most of it, and they're still really active. But now, there's a lot of bumblebees getting into the action, and they are a lot easier to photograph. Uh, and get video and of because they're slower and noisier and uh, easier to get a focus on so you can get the idea it's pretty cool they're still hard hard to photograph but it's still possible <laughs>